Hello and welcome to Jessie James Beads. How are you doing today? I hope you've had a successful, beautiful, relaxing day today. No matter what it is you've been doing, I hope that it went as well as it possibly could. This is Jem. I'm from the United Kingdom. I live slap bang in the middle of England and I'm here today to talk about chain and the beautiful bead mix called Stone Age. Now I've popped links for our weekly deal and for the Stone Age bead mix into the video description so you can click on those at your leisure to grab the weekly deal. Now the weekly deal is buy two chains, get another one free or three for two as I like to think of it. So if you click on the link you can go and check out the weekly deal. I've chosen three chains of different colours from a beautiful care box that the lovely Sarah sent over to me. So I'll show you those chains in a second and I thought today we'd make a really lovely bracelet which you're going to be able to repeat a multitude of times with the fantastic bead mix. I'm working today with Stone Age which is from the Colour Trends range. So let me pop you down to the board to have a look at the project we're going to work on together and the materials that I'm going to be using in today's live tutorial. Let's pop you down there for a second. Okay, so that's the little bracelet we're going to make together. These are the chains that I have elected to work with. And this is the bead mix. Today we're working with the Colour Trends bead mix in Stone Age. So what I need to do right now is just pop down to my computer and make sure that we're broadcasting okay and find a way to catch up on those comments. Cynthia is in. Good morning, Cynthia. How are you, Treacle Pie? I hope you've had a good one. Do feel free to give us a shout out where you're from, what the weather's like, what you've been doing today, what time is it where you are. So our beads are Stone Age from Colour Trends and these are everything that I have left over from making my bracelet. Now if I say Thu Thao, that's going to be wrong. Is it Tu Tao? Welcome to you and apologies if I have said your name incorrectly. Celia is in. Hello, my darling. Roberta is in from Montana. And Cynthia is doing pretty good, I think, because half of the comments have disappeared. Happy days. Edith is in also from Mexico City. Hello and welcome to you. Lovely to have your company this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to Jesse James Beads. I hope you're having a great day no matter what you're doing. Leah is in. Hello, my darling. How are you? I hope you're all as well as you possibly can. Tutau. I hope that's correct because I genuinely can't remember what order I said those in, sweet pea. And uh, Nora is in from Michigan and Judith is five past one in Richmond, Virginia. Beautiful day to you all. Midday in Illinois from Leah. And Kay is coming in from Goose Creek in Southern Carolina. Hello, my lovelies. So I am going to be working with our weekly deal today, which is a fantastic buy two, get another one free on chain. I like to think of it as three for two, but that is what we have on our weekly deal is fantastic chains. Now I have chosen three at random from a care box that was very fortunately sent to me from the lovely Sarah. CCL is in from South Africa from Cape Town. Good day to you, sweet pea. Liz is in from Michigan, but in South Carolina working. Yes, I'm also watching from Houston in Texas. Welcome to you, Tutau. I hope that all is well in Houston. So I've chosen these three chains. Now, as you can see, these are not long lengths. My ruler is in the other room right now, but these are about six and one quarter inches long. Now, the way I measure my chain for a bracelet like this that has quite a large toggle clasp, I'm going to be demonstrating with another one of these beautiful Jesse James beads toggles. I used a heart shape in bronze and here I have an antique silver with a really heavy weight, almost a bowed shape to work with for our tutorial together today. Uh, Cynthia's from Colorado Springs. Broken ankle is beginning to heal but I have to wear the boot for another six more weeks so it'll be around three to four weeks since I've been wearing it. That doesn't sound like fun sweet pea. I'm sorry that you had that in the heat of the summer as well. 
The way I measure chain for bracelets using a toggle is to pull that very firmly around the wrist of the intended recipient and get those two ends, Let's see if I can make you see what I'm doing, as close together as you can. Let's get my hand out of the way. So you can see there's a small gap there on that one. They don't all have to be the exact same length. Let me just do the same on this one and then try and flip my wrist over a bit more elegantly. Can't do it. Can't flip my wrist over. Basically, the chain goes around my wrist and there's a tiny, tiny gap in between. That's all I leave, just a tiny gap, less than a quarter inch. And then the big one, maybe this one will go all the way over without me losing the ability to show you. There you go. So I'm pulling that really tightly and there's just the tiniest gap. So that's how I measure a multiple chain bracelet for my wrist. If you are creating for a client, you can then use their wrist measurement, actual wrist measurement, end to end, and you should be fairly close. I have teeny wrists, so this is six and a quarter inches in length. La Vita is in from Jersey City. Hello to you, sweetheart. Cynthia says hi. Hey, you. How are you? Teresa from Tampa. Been away through no fault of my own. You have been through it, haven't you, my darling? I hope that things are starting to improve, my lovely. Sherby is in. Hello to you. And hello from South Louisiana. Hello to you, Treacle. So my chain is our weekly deal. Three strands. You're paying for two of them. That's a bit good. I do love chain. I do love making jewellery with chain. So I'm also going to be adding in a Jesse James or Tierra cast toggle. I tend to use quite oversized toggles because I think it balances the chunkiness of the bracelet. It's not a super fine micro faceted teeny tiny two millimeter bracelet. This is chunky and impactful. So I chose to work with three different colours. So you can see the types of chain I've chosen are quite different. You have a variating mildly twisted curb with two different link sizes. And you have this which I suppose is almost a jointed paperclip chain. I don't know what it's actually called though I'm afraid. So don't quote me on that one. Sissy is here. Hello, my darling. Your Cheshire cat has come to say hello to you and your creations. Love you. Just packed your kit, my darling. Thank you so much for being here. Anne is in from SoCal. How are you, my darling? I hope that you are also keeping well. So there we have our chains. The bead mix. Now, these are all that I have left. There's so many. I literally used a handful. There's one of these large... Gosh, I don't know what it's made of. Let's have a look at its counterpart. It's not a stone. It looks like a brushed copper. But there's also a little hint of an AB on either end. It's very unusual. I've not seen one like that before at all. Dawn is in from Win Winchelsea in East Sussex. Welcome to you, my lovely. I hope that you are well. And if I've pronounced Winchelsea incorrectly and it's Winchelsea, I'm very sorry. I've not been to Winchelsea. So I'm going to recreate that design as well as we go through today's tutorial. So I'll pick that one out and just pop it up at the top for now. Uh, for this one, we could use the same one again, and then I will show you the rest of the beads after. Teresa says they are not fast as I'd like, but I am progressing. That is good news, my darling. So this is almost an octagon facet on every surface. Huge drill aperture and a very, very sultry metallic tone to this crystal bead. I'll use one of those again, I think. Now, there is a gemstone here. It could be a jasper. Or it could be an agate. I do not know, but I have popped a link to Colour Trends Bead Mix Stone Age in the video description. If you like what you see, you can go and grab one of those. So we'll use one of those as well. And there's also these incredibly cool wooden saucer beads. I love working with wooden beads. They have a tactile nature, very unlike anything else that you work with. The closest I suppose is clay but this is a gorgeous mix. So those are the beads that I'm going to work with for this project. I have literally drawn four, oh no, tell a fib, five. I'm going to add in this gorgeous antique bronze. I'm going to call it a rosette. It could be a rose. Can't decide what that is. So there's just five pieces I'm drawing from this mix to use for this bracelet and those three relatively short lengths of chain toggle clasp and then you have the option whether to work in 18 gauge or 20 gauge. I'm using silver colour round wire 
This is the German style beadle on wire and I'm probably going to demonstrate in 18 gauge. It's quite a firm wire to work with so if you feel that that's a little bit strong for you 20 gauge is going to work really nicely especially on these end pieces because we're going to do a little light rosary linking in a little while. Hello from Quebec in Canada. Hello to you, Jeanette. I hope you are well. MC is in from Greenville, Texas. How are you today? I am cracking, thank you, my lovely. There is no other thing that I can be other than cracking, which is British-ish, ish-ish, for I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for asking, my love. All is good. I am upright and I am able to get out and I have done a day's work and I am enjoying myself with you beautiful people. So I'm going to work with the 18 gauge but you could just as well work with the 20 gauge and that's round German style in the silver colour. Now the rest of these beads, some of them are just incredibly beautiful. Well they're all incredibly beautiful but I particularly like these deco inspired little square. It could be Aztec. I, I don't claim to be a professor of style but I do like those it's beautiful it's a cross between an antique copper and an antique bronze it's beautiful metallics there are these resin shell beads as well those are huge make an amazing ring maybe I'll do that another time we've got ceramics in the blend as well I call these pumpkin beads but they're not a classic pumpkin they're not carved but they have these little ridges on them hand painted ceramic beads are always a joy to work with we have got our disco balls we've got lava beads now if you are a lover of aroma um, then you can pop one of these into a little cage add a drop of your essential oil or perfume oil and that will be with you all day long lava beads are a natural product formed by volcanoes as you are probably aware and uh, they do carry and hold a scent really beautifully so you can just put a little drop probably best not to have it directly on your skin so maybe hanging away or on a handbag charm or something somewhere where it can't cause discoloration with the heavy oils that you might like to use so we've got lava beads we've got wood we've got ceramics we've got resin shell mosaic beads i've got these really really cool frosty and polished faceted they're like a rondelle shape but drilled in the opposite. It's a very, very poor description of what they are. They're gorgeous. And we have got your usual collection of amazing hot copper daisy spacers, but plus they're really chonksome, and some bead caps. Lots more of the other bits and pieces that I've already showed you, just repeats of those. So that's your Stone Age mixer. We'll move that out of the way for now. I've chosen the beads that we're going to work with. Let's have a look at our project together before we kick off. So one of the things I like to do is mix my metals. I do like to have different colours all joined up together and just sticking it in a way that perhaps you wouldn't necessarily associate. But just if, if you like it, then it's right. That's all I'm going to say. If you like it, then it's right. So I've got the three lengths of chain. You might notice that they're not all exactly the same length. That's because I've cut them where it best suited each of those links. So I, as I say, I like to mix the metals. You don't have to. You could go for all gold or silver or this beautiful dark tone. Um, would you call that uh, gunmetal maybe? It looks like a gunmetal to me. Uh, these come to me in a bag and I have no clue what they're called. So forgive me if I don't give you the correct information. I've pulled a selection of beads from that gorgeous bead mix. Let's get cracking. So let me just undo the bracelet and I'll just pop that on the back of my wrist and show it to you as it would look on. So it's a jumble, an absolute jumble. And I adore that. A lady came into the shop where I work the other day and she had this necklace, which was basically a mishmash of everything. And I adored it and inspired me to come back and do something like this with you. So the beauty of these is if you cut them too short, you can extend them with a little connector at the end. So if you cut them to the size of the wrist and then you pop on your clasp and it's just not quite right, you can always extend the end down. All is not lost. So I chose a beautiful antique toned heart toggle. That's how I'm finishing this piece. And I'm going to show you the technique for collecting the chains at one end. Do you know what? I forgot that I'd need a couple of those big chunky daisy spacers. Let's add those onto the end. So you can see, even though I've made two identical bracelets, or I will have by the end of today, 
I've still got loads of beads to play with and can replicate and mix and change as I desire. So shall we start by collecting the chains all at one end and then you can decide how to add in your charms. So I love working with designs like this because every one that you have can be completely different. So I'm just going to pop the chains side by side for now. Now you might want to have the finer chains on the outside, or you might want two finer chains and then the heavier chain, or you might want to stick with just three chains that are very, very similar. Joy is in from Ravenel, Southern Carolina, I want to say. If I've pronounced that poorly, I'm terribly sorry. Um, pronunciation of place names is always a bit tricky. <laughs> So let's just pop those in a line. I think that's the order I'm going to stick with today. So let's grab a length of wire. As I mentioned to you earlier, I'm working with the 18 gauge round silver colour from Beadalon in German style. You could equally work with the 20 gauge for this portion of the tutorial if you prefer. So I've just cut around about six inches there to work with. Margaret has joined us from beautiful, beautiful Edinburgh. Hello to you, my darling. I hope you are as well as you can be. Stacy is in. Late, but hello. Do not fret, pet. We are loving having you here. So what I'm going to do is just give that a quick warm through. If you have never met me, the thing you will hear me say more than anything else other than love is warm the wire. Love is a word I bandy around quite a lot. So let's get that nice and toasty warm and smooth. And we're going to be quite generous with what wire we have. That's plenty, that, uh, plenty more than we actually need. I'm just going to flush cut the end there. I'm not short of wire, so we're going to work with this. Maria is in from Buena Park, California. Hi, JM and Beaders and JJB. Uh, Jessica is in Huggles, Gem and everyone. And Robin has joined us. Welcome to you all, sweet peas. So what we're going to do is allow a good two inches from one end before we turn a right angle. Now, this is more than we need, but we're just going to make sure that everything goes as smoothly and simply as we could possibly hope. So I'm giving that an extra warm. I'm grabbing hold of my round nose pliers. You could equally use your Beadalon uh, memory wire. I forgot the word for memory wire. That's genuinely hilarious. I forgot the word for memory. Write that down, somebody, because that is just me in a nutshell. You could use your memory pliers, memory wire pliers, or a standard round nose. So I'm going to grip that wire just past the junction that we just made, that angle. I'm going to rotate those around until I get a full circular shape. Now it can be that you, the first time you do it, it's not quite large enough. If you do that, you can genuinely rescue these just by opening that out and drawing the wire back across. And you see, we've still got quite a round shape. Before I add any of my wires on, I'm going to grasp firmly just the round section. Please note I'm not squishing where the wires cross over one another. Opening and closing the pliers there to add some strength to that form. So what I want to do now is very gently open up the shape so that you can see that gap. Let me just turn that over. There's now a gap between that angle and the continuation of the wire there. That's the best angle. So the gunmetal chain that I'm using is connecting these large loops with some small loops. So I've cut this length of chain to end on a large loop, and I'm going to just slide that down onto the circular form I've made, and just allow that to sit in the bottom there until I add my next chain. So I'm referring to this one as a paperclip chain, no idea what it's called. It's going on my bracelet and I like it. That's what's important to me. Then I'm going to finish up with the gold two size slightly twisted curb. I'm just going to push this back together now because we warmed that wire first. You can see that's closed up really nicely. If you want, you can take that circular form down a little bit in size, whatever makes you happy. If you warm that wire first, it will be pliable and help you out. So what I'm going to do is support that circular form across the middle. I'm not going to spend hours and hours talking to you about a wrapped loop. I'm taking the tail all the way around and I'm going to go for a good couple of wraps. So let's just pop that tail over to one side. I've got two and a bit wraps on that section of wire just below the chain. And I'm just going to leave that sticking out for a moment. I'm going to pop my spacer in now and allow that to sit down at the central point. The next thing I need to do is to turn a circular shape as similar, whoopsie daisy, as similar as I possibly can to this size. 
and we're going to add on one end of the toggle clasp in a moment. Now the key here is to allow space for these wraps of wire that you see between the circular form and the spacer bead. So ideally I'm trying to replicate the distance between the circular form and the spacer in the next angle that I create. So I'm turning the wire over to the side and what we're looking for is a vaguely similar amount of space between the angle and the bead, angle and the bead. Now the reason I've got this tail sticking out is in case things don't go quite to plan, you can always rescue. So again, we're going to create a round form. I'm going to use my round nose pliers again to get that started. Take the tail all the way around. And you can just hold it there for a second and see if that's around about the right size. It looks a little bit smaller, so I'm just going to open that back out very quickly just strengthen the circular side there not pressing down where the wires cross over we can open that out slightly and add in one half of our toggle so that now sits into position and you can give that a squish down like so so i've just closed that gap up again and i'm going to repeat the exact same motion as we did on the first side i grip that circular form across take the tail all the way around and just fill in the space until it meets the bead. So bring that all the way over the top. That looks reasonably similar, just giving that a tiny, tiny touch with those bent chain nose pliers. And I'm going to trim away these two ends. Now this length of wire is long enough uh, for us to be able to use that somewhere else. So that's that one. And then that's that one. This one will probably go in the melt pot. And I'm just going to tuck those two tails away. Now I won't repeat the demonstration on the other end, but it is literally exactly the same thing. I don't want to make you bored of seeing me do wrapped loops, but if you've never seen how to do one before, that's how you do it. So I'm just tidying up the ends of the wire, and that is essentially one half of our bracelet done. Let's pop that over to one side so it doesn't get in the way. Now I quite like the idea of adding my charms to the large gunmetal chain. You can add it to whichever of the chains you want to work with. What I would say is let's have a count of the links on the large one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there will be three in the centre, three on either side, if we go for three charms, which I think is the answer. Perhaps we will go for three charms and then we will have that centralised symmetry. You could festoon every single link of that chain with charms. There's certainly more than enough beads, but that would make for a really repetitive tutorial and demonstration for you. So I'm just going to show you a couple of different techniques. Now this first one, super, super simple for you, I promise. It's almost exactly the same as we just used to add the toggle on one end. So I'm not sure that that's actually quite long enough for this job, but it will probably be enough to do a link at the other end, which I'll finish off after I have left you this evening. So let's find a little more of that 18 gauge round wire. Probably only need about five inches or so, to be honest, that looks a little bit scant to be fair, but we will see what happens. So about an inch and a half from one end, I'm going to turn an angle. Again, we're going to do a wrapped loop. So I'll run through that really quickly. I'm not going to close that off until I have added my charm into position quick strengthen, open it up. I'm going to run through this part of the tu tutorial quite quickly because you've just seen how to do a wrapped loop. I don't want to get you bored. So let's support that loop and spin those wires around. Let's just bring that slightly more central to your screen. When it gets towards the end, it can start causing a little bit of pain to your finger to do that by hand. So you may prefer to use the two plier technique, which is a case of just rotating it around until that end is hidden away against the core. Some people will always do a wrapped loop with both pairs of pliers. Thank you very much, Margaret. They are indeed beautiful chains that we're working with, and that is one of the reasons we're here today, is because there is a buy two, get one free. That's our weekly deal at Jesse James Beads. So let's add a wooden spacer bead. Now the joy of these is that they can slightly go over that wrapped loop, which I adore because it makes it seamless. And then we're going to add one of those, maybe it's a jasper, maybe it's an agate. And the key for this is to leave a little bit of space up at the top before we 
pop those pliers in. Now, it is, if you prefer to have it hanging like so, you absolutely may. But I like to have that rosette facing forwards. So whilst that is facing forwards, I'm going to push the wire upwards. So my two loops are in the same orientation. If I turn that sideways, you can see this is going to be in the same orientation. When you're making this next loop at the second end, we need to be sure that it's going to fit onto our chosen chain. So if it's one of the finer chains, you really don't have a massive problem. If it's this, I'm going to continue calling it paperclip chain, even though that's probably not what it's called. If it's one of those, you might prefer to use the finer, the 20 gauge wire, or you might prefer to just have this as a detail and use one of the larger chains. So let's make quite a nice large loop down at the bottom of those round nose pliers, bring the tail all the way around, quite a large loop there. So we're going to set this on one of those three central loops. So again, you can see that we've got a small gap there. Open that out slightly, made the gap larger, add it on to one of those three central pieces, close it up, and then we're going to close that all the way around. This is why I believe that one of the first things we want to learn when we're wrapping wire is a rosary link. Because if you learn a rosary link, which is all we're doing here, you learn to do it well, you have got so many techniques that you can move on to. So for instance, today, much of what we're doing is rosary linking and you can make oodles and oodles and oodles of charms in this way from this one pack of Stone Age. So there's our first charm made and we're not even half past the hour yet. How cool is that? These things make up really, really quickly. So for our second charm, we're going to go for a little heart detail. Let me just turn that over and arrange it so... I'm not very patient when it comes to arranging jewellery for photographs, I'm afraid. <laughs> there we go. So let's just face those in the correct way for now. So let's make a little heart together. Going to need slightly more wire for this one. So I would say probably a good seven inches or so will be more than enough. And it will leave you enough to make some rosary linkings later. It's better to have a little bit too much than a little bit too little. Again, I'm going to make sure that those ends are nice and flush cut. So we're going to start in exactly the same way by making ourselves a wrapped loop. Actually, do you know what? we're going to make half a wrapped loop. So I've put come about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half from the end. And I'm going to put the circular form in, but I'm not going to tie it off because we won't add that to the chain until the last minute. Strengthening the loop, opening that out. Let's pick a bead. So I've gone for one of these... It's almost like an octagon facet on every surface. They are truly, truly beautiful. Let's just move this up slightly so I can be more centralised on the board. You can still see those? Yes, super duper. OK, so what we're going to do now is to create a little heart shape down beneath this cube bead. So for my eye, this time the angles are going to be different. So if I've got the loop on the chain going forwards, I will want the heart to come away sideways. It will become apparent in a moment. So I'm imagining that this is sitting on the chain and this is the face I'll be seeing. What I want to have is a gap either side of that bead to enable me to do some rosary link wrapping. And then I'm just going to make sure that I'm happy with that angle. Just get that nice and firm so that it sits neatly and comes away from the central core wire that heads up through the bead. So that's slightly off the kilter, but I can just twist that around. So I'm going to warm the wire just to the side of that angle and start asking the wire to just arc around in a nice, smooth form. Now, if you struggle with this, you can employ your beautiful six step bail makers and I'll show you just quickly with and then I'll undo it and do it without. So I'm going to rotate that around and draw the wire across so that it encircles and you get this beautiful jaunty half a heart shape. If you don't have access you can always use a pencil but I do recommend these beadle on six step bail makers they are very very cool as are the two step bail makers. The sparkly bead is beautiful Margaret you're absolutely correct. So we're just going to ignore this bit up here for a second. What we're going to do is warm that wire through again and find the bottom part of the heart. Now you're obviously more than welcome to add more beads in as you go. 
what we're going to do is pop those pliers in and push that wire very sharply back up. I'm just going to pinch the base of my heart shape there and just allow the wire to flare out to the side. Now, if you don't have those bail makers, you can still ask the wire to help you make that shape. If you get this really, really toasty warm. For 18 gauge, you can go sort of 10 times, just getting that super toasty. You can even just grip it if it hurts your fingertips to rub the wire like so. What I'm going to do is just push my thumb into the wire and ask it to kind of just curve around. And it does look like magic. And I promise you with practice, it becomes easier and more controllable. So I've got basically a replica of that first half. However, it's not identical. So I'll just give that a bit of a tweak and see if I can get that a little bit closer. I'm quite happy with how that looks as a rustic heart. Use that plier almost always, says Maria. It's a fantastic set of pliers. It's a wonderful tool to have. So many things you can do with your six-step bell maker. I adore mine. Equally, if you're making teeny tiny charms, you can employ the memory wire pliers to do the same thing. So once you've got the heart kind of set and you're happy with that, you can give it a very, very gentle squish just to set that shape. If you're super happy with it and you don't want it to move at all. What I'm going to do now is just push the bead up out of the way. And I'm going to put my pliers over the top and just change the direction of the wire so that it comes up as if it was going to become the second half of that heart. So it's changing direction at the point where it joins that central core wire that's come down through the bead. Once that is set into position, what I'm going to do is grip hold of the second half that we created and tuck the tail around the core. So I'm going to bring that up to the camera slightly, gripping hold of the angle that we've just created and tucking the tail around underneath. So again, it looks a little bit like magic, but it isn't. The reason I'm at pains to kind of squish that firmly and stop it from moving too much is that I don't want to pull this half of the heart around the core wire and as we start winding that's something that tends to happen so I'm just going to protect my bead squish that wire down so that it sits as low on the core as possible and then draw the tail over the top now what can happen is that the wire gets drawn into that coil so another way that you can avoid that let me just undo that slightly push that back into position is you can turn the whole thing upside down grip the wire on the second half of the heart so it can't possibly go anywhere and push that tail around. It just takes a little bit of action to scooch that up in the gap and draw it around that central core. So once that is sitting, you might need to just reform that heart slightly. Overall, I'm quite happy with how this is looking. I think we might go for one more turn around that central core wire. In fact, no, I need to leave a gap at the top. Stop me before I do that. <laughs> We're leaving a small gap between the angle at the top and the top of the bead so that we can do a wrapped loop up there. So you do need to have a gap. I forgot about that. I'm going to trim this to around about an inch. My ruler has gone A1. It's in the other room. So I'm just going to guess an inch. Take my round nose pliers now and create a coil. If you've never seen a coil done or if you've never tried a coil, start slow, start at the end of your round nose pliers, start rotating them around. Now you can use both hands. My action with my tools is always like this. And this means that I put equal stress on both sides. I'm probably bored of me saying this, but I do have arthritis in a couple of my fingers and my wrist as well as other places. So I don't want to stress my body too much. I want to take care of it. Once I've got that round shape started, I'm going to push that into the tail of wire and increase the number of coils or the number of circuits of wire around that central coil section. So once that's centralized, I can push it down over the top middle of the heart and you've got yourself a nice little quirky heart shape with a bead above. Now, I've made this reasonably large. This is probably larger than I would wear as a charm on a bracelet. It would be really nice for earrings or for a diminutive pendant, bit large for a bracelet. However, if I make it teeny tiny, it's really hard to show you. Bless you, Maria. That's very kind of you. Thank you so much. So let's move back to our section of chain that we're working on right now. 
So I said that I would have three without anything on either end and then a couple in the middle, three in the middle. So let's make sure that we've got a gap in our soon to be wrapped loop. Open up the gap. If I show you that angle, yeah, you can see the gap is there and add it onto the chain. Now chain will twist in wear. So you can spend your entire life making sure that your charms are added on the same side as I am now. And then when you put it on, it will twist anyway. So it's a bit of a jumble design, but I really like that. So I'm just going to pop that one onto the large loop of this gunmetal chain. And then again, we're holding across that circular form. We're not gripping anywhere to disrupt the chain and we're not putting any pressure on the bead and we're not squishing the wires where they cross over. So as long as you can get one and a half wraps, that will be secure. Always be mindful of your beads. They don't like to be scratched or goodness forbid, they don't like to be shattered. So if you need to tuck that tiny little end section away, let me just bring that up. It'll be blurry, but you can see, can you see that sticky uppy bit? We don't like sticky uppy bits. We want that to be flat. So I'm using the rounded side of my round nose. Uh, they're not round nose. The bent chain nose pliers. You know what I mean. Squish that into position. That's nice and smooth and it now won't catch on anything. So that's our second charm done on our charming jumbly bracelet and you can see already that they've twisted around and you know life's about planning things and things not doing what you want them to do so that's just the way it is I guess. So for our last charm I wanted to do something really quite fun. That's very kind of you Linda I appreciate your kind feedback thank you so much. For our last one, it's almost like um, an ice cream or I don't know what it is. It's cool, it's fun and it's springy. Now this is just a tiny, tiny bit more challenging and you would definitely want to use 18 gauge wire for this. The 20 gauge won't cut it. The 20 gauge is perfect for your rosary links. You might not really want to do a, a 20 gauge heart unless it's really tiny and then you spend some time either hammering it or squishing it flat to protect it. For this last charm that we're going to teach today, you definitely want to have the 20, uh, sorry, the 18 gauge, the stronger wire. So I'm going to unspool probably around about eight inches. Again, I'm working with wire that is much longer than I need, but I will always reuse where possible. So making sure that we are flush cut on both ends and that I don't stab myself with the detritus. We're going to start with our round nose pliers. Now this is a fun thing to make. It takes just a little bit more practice to get it going, but it is lots and lots of fun. So I'm going to start, you remember we made the coil for the front of the heart, we're going to start in exactly the same way. End of the pliers, end of the wire. So I'm going to start around like so, but I'm going to allow that shape to be slightly more open the one on the heart was very much closed up. This one has just got a little bit of a space in the middle. It's not a large gap at all. You will definitely benefit from warming your wire. Once I've got that started, I'm going to allow my spiral to build up. But rather than keeping those wires side by side, as we did with the closed coil, I'm going to allow them to slightly open out. Now you can graduate from a small gap on the first rotation around that central round form, or you can just keep the same gap all the way around. The size that we're aiming for is just ever so slightly larger than the size of the round bead that you've chosen. So you could use one of those, you could even, if you wanted to, use one of those. I don't know what it would look like with a not round bead, but it would be interesting to find out. You could make teeny tiny ones with the lava beads. You've got choices. I like these. I, in fact, I really like these beads. I definitely want them some more. Cherie, hi Gem, I'm having tech problems, but it's wonderful with what I've seen. Oh, bless you. I'm so sorry that it's not happening for you. Technology is wonderful, but my gosh, it can be a bit tricksy. So I'm going to continue with a gappy coil. So it's an open coil. I don't know why I called it a gappy coil. That's not a very nice thing to call it, is it? I'm just going to continue rotating around. It doesn't matter if it's slightly larger gaps here and a slightly smaller gap there. You won't really be able to see it. What we're looking to do is to create a coil that is just slightly larger than that bead. So I think I need to go just a little bit further, just a little bit further. 
and warming the wire will definitely help you forming these. Marisol says, always love Gems Designs. Thank you, my darling. That's very kind. So you can see now, hopefully, with the colour of the bead underneath my spiral, that there's a bit of a gap. So this is just ever so slightly larger. What we're going to do, pop the bead out of the way. Where I have stopped creating that spiral, I'm going to grip in the opposite direction. So across the wire. I'm just going to pull that wire to the centre of that spiral. Doesn't matter if it's a little bit wavy. It really doesn't matter. And I'm going to turn my pliers so that they're on the same plane as the wire. Just open that out slightly so I've just put a little bit of a gap in there. I'm going to push the wire up and away. So I've got an open spiral. From the outside of the open spiral, my tail of wire continues to the centre of the spiral and then comes up and away. So I don't even know what you could imagine that that is similar to. It's just a very weird thing and nobody knows what it's called. It's just like a, a, a an open spiral on the end of a stick. The next thing I'm going to do is bring in my round nose pliers, which I forgot again the word for. And I'm just going to make my life easier. I'm just going to very, very gently tease the design open. I'm being very, very soft and careful here because I will want to push this wire back in a moment. So all I've done is I've just eased that away at an angle for the moment. I'm going to take one side of my round nose pliers and push them into that central aperture. And what I'm going to do is just tease that coil so that it comes down like a helix away from that beginning point. Now, you may need some help with your pliers. So if I just put this in the middle of the screen, just draw that down until you get a little helix going on. And at times it can be tricky. So you might want to just use your pliers to manually pull up that central section. So what you're looking for is almost like a cone shape. So you've created a spiral. Once you've got your spiralling cone shape, we're going to push that wire back to where you started, which is above that very centre where you began the coil. So ideally what we're looking for is a straight line that goes from the aperture at the base of the coil, imaginary line up through the centre and then straight line on that upright core post wire. So I'm then going to pop the bead on and let's have a look. That looks reasonable. I could have done slightly more coiling. And then what I'm going to do is just push that very, very gently so that the bead sits inside the top of that spiral. I think this is really, really cute and really, really cool. So that's what it looks like from all the directions. And then all we're going to do is guess what? A wrapped loop up at the top. So you can be quite uh, fanciful with this. You can do far more spiraling than I have. Thank you, Margaret, for your kind feedback. What I'm going to do here is pop my pliers across the top of the bead. This really does look like brushed copper, but it's so light. I think it must be copper coating something. And then I'm going to draw the wire away at one angle. Now, the angle that you choose, it might depend on how you're viewing your work. If you have a side that you prefer, that is the side that you bring the wire towards. So if that was my favourite side of the 3D ice cream cone thingy, um, then you would bring your wire forwards so that that is your point of view. Nine times out of ten, it doesn't matter. It looks very similar all the way around, especially if you do slightly more coils. Fantastic tip, says Margaret. Anne is having tech problems too. Voice keeps fading in and out. Love the bracelet. Thank you for being here. Hopefully on replay, it will show you what you need to hear. Maria, really cute, can't wait to try it. Please do upload your makes with these designs. I am still really enamoured with the change that I received. So buy two, get a third free. Amazing, that's our weekly deal. And we're working with the bead mix colour trends uh, family called Stone Age. And I've still got all of these beads to play with. So plenty to make even more bracelets. Sorry, dog hair, there's always one. So once you've chosen your favourite direction, if there is one, uh, we're going to make another wrap loop. Remembering if you're using the large gunmetal chain like I am, it needs to be a reasonably large loop. So I've actually crafted this loop with the gap pre-made. And all I've done to do that is just to draw the wire up slightly 
like so on that round nose plier side just it's one less move to do and if you get tired making jewelry if your wrists hurt then one less thing to do is always good right and there we go so we're, again we're just going to close that up now uh Dvorak a famous name loved her works oh I see because it's Leah's surname I see yes absolutely um Dvorak was also a musical composer I want to say I'm sure there has been a Dvorak if I'm pronouncing that poorly terribly sorry so I've wrapped the wire around and around that core trimming away the very end bit and then we're going to take our round nose pliers uh, they're not round to nose I keep calling them the, the bent chain nose pliers and I'm using the rounded side that was where my brain was at to just push that tail of wire down and protect the bead whilst I'm doing it so all we would do then is connect all three chains at the other end in exactly the same way as we did at the beginning so by creating your little rosary link design and in the middle you've got a spacer on the far end you've got the other pair the other half to your toggle in this case it's a nice bow flared heavyweight silver color piece and then your uh, wrapped loop on the other end contains all of the pieces of wire and you've got a lovely jumbly chain charm bracelet so I won't show you the wrapped loop again because you must be bored stupid of them by now if you've seen them before but that is the design so what you can also do is twist this around it just makes it super cool and interesting it's not quite as comfortable to wear if you do that but if it gets tangled anyway it's all fair in love and fashion yes I think so so that's the piece that we've made together today but twice I'll finish this off later and pop a photo up can't wait to try this design says Leah let's wake my mouse back up and say hello do you have any questions about today's make along with Jem if we haven't met before my name is Jem Hawks I live in the United Kingdom slap bang in the middle of England and it is almost 7 p.m. here and today we have been working with a color trends bead mix called stone age hopefully you can see that the lights a bit squiffy at the moment because the Sun's going down and we've also been working with our weekly deal which is chain buy two and get one free at Jesse James beads I have put links into the video description for both of those products both the weekly deal and the stone age but if you have any questions please do just tag me in the comments below the video and I will endeavor to come back to you and answer them if I possibly can it's been my pleasure as ever to be with you let's check those last few comments Margaret says love this design Gem. thank you can't wait to try this design says Leah and Maria says so beautiful thanks Gem. Judith says lovely thank you loving you guys thank you so much for your company today this afternoon this evening this morning wherever it is whenever it is it's been my absolute pleasure so I look is my pendant a tutorial on your page says Janine yes if you head over to my YouTube channel which I'll pop in the links because I can never remember it's if you search for Gem Hawks you'll find it it is um, a beaded Sun pendant it came out about two months ago so you'll be able to find it quite easily thank you to for being with us today it's been my pleasure and I look forward to seeing you again soon. I'll pop a link to my YouTube in the comments in a minute. Have yourself a fabulous day and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.